Hi everyone and welcome back to Laquanda's Heart. So I wanted to do a special video because it has been, I am celebrating a huge anniversary. It has been 10 years since my first uh, psychiatric hospitalization. Um, and I just wanted to talk uh, about the things that I've learned about myself and I've learned about the process. Um, for those of you who do not know, and if you're not new to the channel, or if you are new to the channel, you're not aware, I am very open about the fact that I manage bipolar one disorder. Um, my first hospitalization took place back in January 2010, um, which was 10 years ago this month. Um, since then, so much has happened it's been a decade um so much has happened um just to backtrack during that time i was going through a very major um depressive episode i was um actively psychotic i was sick to the point i was delusional i was paranoid i was having racing thoughts i was sick to the point to where I could not take it anymore and I felt like, okay, this is it. Um, it was very difficult for me. Um, at the time I was a young therapist, um, thinking I found my, my dream job, my career, this is what I'm, I'm meant to do. And then I got sick. And when I got sick, my world came crashing down. Um, as I've said before in previous videos, I could not work. Um, I could not live by myself. I had to live with my sisters, um, rotating between the two of them, my older, my older sisters. And also, I could not care for my daughter, who at the time was four. Um, so what that meant is while I was in the hospital, my daughter had to go stay with her father and when I got out of the hospital, that's where she remained. And that's where she remains um, to this day. Um, and so when I was ill and I had went to the hospital, it was very traumatizing for me. I had worked in a psychiatric hospital before as a therapist, but I had never been a patient on a psychiatric um, unit before. Um, I was there with other people who were actively psychotic and so for me it was really scary one dealing with my own thoughts and also dealing with the thoughts of someone else um, who was dealing with uh, psychosis as well um, for me in my psychotic episode I thought that um, people who drove black cars were out to get me and I thought that people who drove orange cars were there to save me um, and you know how many times you see orange cars versus black on the street so every single day I was absolutely terrified um, when I went out in, in public when I was at home things didn't improve much because I believed that um, I was being recorded, um, audio and video. And so that would um, determine my behavior inside the home. I would watch what I would eat. I would watch what I would say. I thought people were monitoring my cell phone. Um, and that actually led to one night me taking a cell phone and taking a sledgehammer and actually destroying the phone because I believed that somebody was um, you know, getting into the phone and listening to my conversation. Um, fast forward out of the hospital, I was still actively psychotic. I was afraid to be at home, and so I was checking myself into a hotel. Um, that was the only way, way that I could manage. Um, so I did that for about a week or two, and I was able to come back home. And I was um, prescribed antidepressants and anti-psychotic um, medication. Um, the medication took a while to work. I went back to work immediately um, on a psychiatric unit. 
at a state hospital and that didn't last long. Um, for that first year, I went through two jobs. I stayed there for probably like three months on each job and I couldn't handle it anymore. So I went and I stayed with my sister. And staying with my sister allowed me um, time to to get stabilized on medication, to um, really start to rebuild myself. Um, it took probably two and a half years after my hospitalization before I was able to begin doing work mean meaningfully again in the field of mental health. And I went back as a crisis line um, counselor. But that was um, after two and a half years of being on medication um, and then getting to a point to where I could actually function, get out of the bed, sleep, um, eat again, take care of myself physically because it was a real, real big struggle. Um, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit. I ended up getting a job, another job at a psychiatric hospital and I thrived. And after a while, I, during this whole time, you know, my daughter, father, and I would um, work together. We had our hiccups here and there to where I could see my daughter on a regular basis. And I started to become strong enough where she could stay with me over the summer and over holidays. And um, right now, you know, I see her as often as I want to. I have full access to her. Um, and so, you know, that part of my um, my journey has come to a point to where I, you know, I, I'm a mom, I'm an active mother in my daughter's life, and it feels amazing. Um, today, 10 years later, I am a practicing mental health therapist again, um, which I absolutely love, and I help individuals who are in crisis, people who are suicidal, people who are homicidal, people who are actively psychotic, um, and who are in um, serious need um, of support during that time. And so that is um, what I do currently. I am the former director of outreach for one of the largest mental health um, nonprofits in the nation. And um, for those of you who also know, I am the founder of Healing Black Women on Instagram and a platform on Instagram and YouTube. And we also have something else launching, excuse me, on Instagram and Facebook. And we also have something else launching pretty soon. So keep a lookout for that. Um, I would say that this journey has taught me a lot about being, not just, you know, being empathetic to individuals who are living with mental health conditions, but also giving myself grace. I would beat myself up when I got, when I would get sick. And I've had more than one hospitalization. Um, you know, I'm, I have a, a psychologist, I have a psychiatrist, and I had to learn to give myself grace because I'm dealing with a disease and we are dealing with diseases. And when we deal with these things, sometimes we wanna be well, um, forever <laughs> and that's not always the case and you know I have moments um, I have times where I relapse and I need to see my therapist every day that week um, and that happened to me back in 2018 you know where I was seeing my therapist every single day and I had to because I was I was struggling um, I've learned that I'm a lot stronger than I give myself credit for. Sometimes I really want to fold. Um, and sometimes I don't want to do this anymore. And when I say that, I mean that I get frustrated that I have to live with this condition. Um, and sometimes I throw a hissy fit and I was like, oh, I don't want to be on medicine. Why do I have to be on medicine? And then I think about, well, you have asthma and you take your inhaler when you can't breathe. And say, so what's the, what's the difference? And so I rein myself in. Um, but I would say um, most of all, I look back and I tell myself that I'm proud of me. 
um, that this has not been an easy road, um, but it has been a fight and I'm thankful forever to my sisters who um, took care of me and made sure that financially that I have somewhere to stay. They made sure that, you know, I didn't have to worry about a roof over my head, that I didn't have to worry about food to eat. They helped me in staying connected, you know, to the community, you know, friends that I had back then who made sure that I got out and about and out of the house when I didn't have a car, um, cause I didn't have a job, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> it really, really was, um, the help of individuals who supported me, that um, that helped pull me through. Because without their support, um, I would not have been able to recover um, in the method, I, in the way that I've been able to recover. Um, I am forever grateful for you guys who have been rolling with me throughout the years and you've seen bits and pieces of my journey. Um, and it has always been my hope that someone out there uh, would see or hear something that I'm saying and it would click with them. And they were like, oh my gosh, you know, I understand that because when I went through um, my episode, I felt so alone. And the last thing I wanted anyone to feel was alone. Um, so if you're wondering why I always talk about mental health, why I'm always sharing my journey, it's always because I never want anyone else who looks like me, a black woman, to feel like they're alone if they had to go to the hospital, to feel like they're alone if they have to see a therapist, to feel like they're alone if they have to um, take medication. Um, I just want, and especially if you're dealing with um, psychosis, you know, understanding um, that that there is hope, there is recovery, and there is a life um, that can be available to you. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. My journey nowhere near was overnight. Um, I didn't start living independently uh, by myself again until 2016, and that was six years after my hospital, my first hospitalization. And so, but what I learned is when I got hospitalized again, I was able to maintain everything that I had gained. And so for me, things got better and I learned how to manage things better. So the whole purpose of this, the whole goal of me continually to speak out and share my story with everyone is so that people who are living with mental health conditions, particularly black women, will see a reflection of themselves and see hope and see a life, see a life and see love and see themselves regaining control. Um, again, I said it's been a journey. Um, sometimes, you know, you think, well, what if things were different? Um, it's been a struggle, but I don't think I would change anything because it has molded me and shaped me into the woman that I am. And I love the black woman thank you guys so much for following me on this journey um you can reach out to me um at laquanda's heart on instagram or and if you're new to seeing this video be sure to subscribe i still i started doing hair tutorials again which i'm starting to love again so um keep a lookout for those as well so thank you guys be sure to follow healing black women on instagram as well at healing black women all right you guys bye